Hello, Kit fans, and welcome back to the Talking Kit podcast, which is a podcast from free <laughs> football. I've lost that one. I've totally lost that one. Let's start again. Hello, Kit fans, and welcome back to the Talking Kit podcast, a podcast for football kit fanatics made by three football kit fanatics. And let me tell you, this time on episode five, there is actually free football kit fanatics here. Sean has returned from the wilderness like Tevez back in 2011 when he went AWOL during training or summer and went off to Argentina. Sean is back. Hello. I wasn't training. I was working hard. I'm not saying you. I'm not saying you're Tevez. I'm saying... Not literally Tevez. You didn't literally yeah. go to Argentina and play golf for six months. Yeah. You're not a and troll, it. are you? And start a rock band. Oh, no, that was um, Osvaldo, weren't it, for Southampton? The getting, your, getting your Argentinians mixed up. Yeah. It's not a great start to the point, is it? Where have you been? What's going on? Working. So, I mean, a man, a man of many words. And, you know, we couldn't wait for you to just come back and just retort like that to us. Well, Thanks for that. Thanks for right, that break. So not only working, but working in the hospitality industry, which no free time. Well, you say you've not had any free time, Sean, and I will bring us on to this nicely because I don't know how long this is going to take, but I know you visited your mum recently, uh, which, of course, is mine and Aaron's auntie. And like a good son. The yeah, like, like a good son. And were you doing some gardening? Did you know my mum's mum's not a gardener? She's not got green fingers at all. She was like, oh, cut down this bush and blah, 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 blah. And it grew back three times the size. She's got a plum tree. It, it grows mint plums, by the way. Not not mint plums, it's not a hybrid. It's just plums that are right ready for the picking. And me being a, a footballer, goalkeeper. Um, <laughs> so picking these plums, I tried to clear my mum's house roof. Like Could you t- tell the story as you said to your mum? I tried to explain it though. You explained it to me. Just You said, <laughs> did you ask for a permission? No, I said, just watch out. I'm going to try and clear the house with a plum. So I tried to say it's like a gold kit. <laughs> With a plum out of my hands, mum was stood about two meters away. I'm getting old now, my accuracy is not great. Rather than go over the house, hit my mum straight in the face. <laughs> Some may say plum in the face, here in the and she went down. <laughs> and if you've ever tried, if you ever kicked a plum at a 61 year old woman in her own house, her own garden, mate, it's not good. I was, at first, I was upset, and then I laughed, and then, and then she still got to right now. So the, the basic, the end of the story, the tale of the story is that you hit your mum in your face with your plums. Is that what you're saying? Oh. <laughs> if I knew where this was going, I wouldn't have said that story. <laughs> Maybe yeah, you told yeah. the story, not me. He hit his mum, his, his mum square in the face with his tasty plums. That's what he told us. <laughs> a full pelt gold kick. So, yeah. Well, God would have been right and not hard, because otherwise she'd have been out. Three, three minutes in and we've got the first clip of the uh, episode. Well done, Sean. Perfect. Thank you very much. Who, 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 no, I was just going to ask who he's going to who he's wearing this evening. Yeah, um, this is Al Garafi. It's um, a Qatar team, or well, Qataris will say a Qatar. Um, this kit <laughs> actually from the nineties. Um, the reason I'm wearing it is because my future brother-in-law was brought up in Qatar and ended up. Tra- he went to an English school over there, an international school. He trained with this team uh, for a few years. Played for their under 18s, I think. It's when Paolo Wanchop played for them as well, um, and he got given a lot of kits. And I've just been to the house. I was like, I need a football kit for the podcast. He was like, Mate, I've got loads. He had Kaka from AC Milan. He had Al Garafi, this one. He had Al Sad from Qatar as well. And who else did he have? It's uh, like you're doing a séance now. Yeah, <laughs> I, a lot of wolves. A lot of wolves shirts. He's a wolf seen to get older. Um, yeah, so I thought, you know what? That's a good story to tell. So he's trained with seven, actually trained with pro footballers. Nice. Very nice. That sponsor, didn't um, Wolves get, were they, not a sponsor, the manufacturer, is it, are they called Baruda or something like, weird like that? I can't remember what they're called. The yeah. one in the centre, the little wavy lines. Oh, the, wavy oh, lines the manufacturer. Oh, I'm sure uh, Wolves Well, are well that, says, that actually looks like it says Baruda. There you go. Which yeah, I know the I should do a podcast about football kits and all my stuff. Yeah. Oh, wait. So, yeah, I mean, it's good to have what? you back. It's, oh, it's, it's a good kit. What now? What it's now? A good, it's a good kit, isn't it? it? looks like a nice kit. It's all right. It, the badge kind of looks like a knockoff Porto badge. 
to me. It does really? actually, yeah, it does. Yeah. Good eyes, man. Thank you. Thank you. As I was saying, it's good to have you back finally. You've been missing for uh, three episodes, two episodes you missed. This two, bad. three, I think. Yeah, two. Two. I've yeah. listened to two. You didn't listen to the last one because you didn't know about the quick fire questions, so. No, busy. <laughs> oh, yeah, the hospitality industry, obviously. Yeah. And, it, and you're moving the house, house, house. Hard, Yeah, okay. Let's not go there. <laughs> That's one thing of the podcast. Yeah. So if you didn't know, Sean, we've started having guests on. We had, Last episode, we had the Kitsman on. Uh, great episode. I I you'll find. Yeah, it was a great episode. You know, very knowledgeable about kits and just an all-around nice guy. He even came on the last episode of The Strip the Down, Strip which is obviously our new live Friday night show when Premier League fixtures are on. So obviously, Sean, you don't have to have any dealing with that whatsoever, seeing as you're in the National League. Um, so... Yeah, it's been, it's been, you've missed a lot, but there's a lot more to come, which is great. So, as I said, we've got a lot of big run up now of guests coming on the pod. And yeah, we've got some someone coming in very, very soon, um, which I can't wait for. James, how have you been? You, you did well on the, um, on the strip down, to be honest with you, mate. I was, I was quite worried for my hosting future. The way I, you well, handled. I think, I think your position there is, is safe with that one. It was, it was good to just not necessarily have an opinion and just listen to everyone else's. Um, but no, it's good. It's good. It's nice to have Sean back, isn't it? Um, Don't throw back to him. He's had his minute. We're talking about. No, no I'm just. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just. I was looking forward to this one. To have Sean back. But no, it's. Uh, it's good to do the strip down, and um, but it's great to do this as well as sort of less pressure on this because yeah. it's not live and on YouTube on well, a Friday no, that, evening. That's true. So mm. if people can't tell, what are you wearing on this episode? I've got. Well, I mean, have you got this as well, Aaron? Yeah, well, again, we're not talking about me. We're talking about you. Stop I'm just uh, wondering. It's the it's the second kit, right? No, it's the third, third kit. kit. Third kit. Manchester United third kit. The latest. Yeah. And I think it's yeah. the first kit I've had actually. Oh, look, I'm doing it the wrong way because of the camera. With something on the sleeve. Uh, still getting used to that. Um, yeah. But yeah, nothing on the back. Don't do names on the back these days. Yeah. Um, let's not talk. I, you know what? I've not worn a United kit for a while now on this podcast, and I've worn it after. The last couple of games that they've had. So just is that a definition of a true fan or just an idiot? I'm not sure, but call yourself a true fan if you want. It's fine. Or both. But yeah. Um <laughs> yeah, they've not been doing too great lately, have they? No, that's the less we talk about that, the better I think. Uh, <laughs> better things to talk about on this pod. Um uh, for anyone who wants to know, I'm wearing the Brazil um two thousand nineteen Copper America shirt they wore, which is a throwback to the very first shirt that Brazil wore, which they lost the FA, uh, World Cup final um, to Uruguay in, which then made them change to yellow. There's a little story for you. So, um, that's Karen wearing Brazil. Well, I shot Karen. Not. It's not, it's not like 2021 now, is it? Nah, your, your roles are long gone, boys. It's all about Brazil again. It's all now. about Brazil again now. It's all yeah. about Brazil. Um, anyway, moving on from us, all caught up. So, yeah, like I said before, we've got some guests coming on the show. For the next couple of episodes now, maybe up until episode 12, I believe, some great guests, some speciality guests, and just general kit fans as well. So, you may have seen, you may have not seen, if you follow talking kit obviously we are part of the sports social network uh, podcast network and there's a host of podcasts on there it's great if you're into horse racing um american football nhl nba uh, all co- all sorts of football arsenal united chelsea the like and stuff like that and then you know more speciality podcasts one of the best ones i have to say not just because we've been on there and they're coming on the show but genuinely one of the best podcasts out there something that we all love um, is team of our lives, and they're two guys who love um, Naughty's football, which you should because it was a great decade of football. Um, so yeah, their podcast is all centered around that. Me and James are featured on there, uh, which is probably the best episode that we've had so far. I have to say so myself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no, yeah, it's uh, run by Ollie and Harry, and we are very lucky to have them on with us. Uh, so I'm going to join him into the studio now. Hello, boys. How are we going? You okay? We are very well. Thank you for your uh, kind words. Thank you very much. Um, you know, you know, it wasn't written. Yep. It's all off the top of my head, so it's obviously heartfelt. You know, I'm not just making it up. Think of this as yeah. the think of this as the trickier way, like after your home, like in the in your. Oh, okay, okay. So we've got, we've got to go. We've got to go to Kiev away. You've got to get a result. Yeah. We've got to get a result tonight. Yeah. yeah. Five o'clock kickoff. 
You're protecting a lead. <laughs> you're protecting a one-nil lead. It's you know it's precarious. So it's on a plastic pitch, and you're not happy about it. But here we go. <laughs> no, there we are. We've we've all been there. Uh, so yeah. So guys. So obviously, um, you run that podcast. It's been going for you're in the second season now, I believe. Yeah, so we've um, we've done the first series where it's just basically the first series was just me and Harry recounting like uh, different fi- different themes of the naughty. So we talk about managers, weird transfers, like cult heroes, um, and then we have done like a little mini Euro version. But the, the the newest series, the latest series, which is out now, wherever you get your podcast, um, <laughs> slick is is exactly yeah, I've done that before. Um, is um, <laughs> it's probably our favourite because we've had guys. Like the football community, like you guys came on. Um, we've had comedians on, uh, other podcasters, writers, authors, um, who've basically come on and told us their stories from the noughties. And that's what we've wanted to kind of do is because we, we grew up in that period. Um, and you know, in, in the 90s is when the FA Premier League was established, and in the noughties is when it kind of took its stronghold, in, in kind of my opinion. And Harry is a Portsmouth fan, I'll, I'll, I'll let him speak for himself, but kind of for me, for me, it's the golden period. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. So just before we get into your love for the Nazis and, and, and the little things we've got lined up for you, to start any episode, what we're going to start to do now with guests is just fire some quick questions at them. Um, yep. So, yeah, you just have to think, think it's all centered around kits and you just have to give us the first answer that you think of. So how let's did it get, last time? Uh, let's start, I was going to say, let's like, get an answer each because we did have one guest on last time. We've got two. Well, yeah. there, might, there might be a difference in opinion between the guys, you know, so... Uh... Uh, yeah, no, it's good good content. Well done, Sean. Uh, James. Oh, <laughs> no, I don't know why. I've known these two all my life and I keep getting confused. It's not acceptable. Not he's, not, he's not been on for weeks. And, uh, no, that's I'm, the I'm, the I'm the one who didn't speak, so he shouldn't go. I just missed you, Sean. <laughs> I just missed you. Uh, okay, so I'll start off and then you can just both give me an answer. Uh, so it's all, like I say, it's all centered around kits. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll kick off. The first one is short or long sleeves? Um, short. Yeah, I've got, got to be short. Okay, both on short. Uh, stadium or authentic kit? Uh, authentic. Yeah, I'd agree as well. Okay. Some people go for stadium because it's not as sort of tight. I, I guess mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so next color, uh, next next question even is color or no color? Ooh. Yeah, I'm going color all day long. I am I am quite partial to a color. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, sponsor, yes or no? No. Yes. What? Oh. So the blank shirt or not a blank shirt? You know, are we? It's, a, it's, a, it's just going to be controversial, and feel free to kick me if you feel uh, you need, if you need to. But surely <laughs> the, the sponsor makes the shirt. In some, although I think it can in some cases, but again, yeah. it's... I don't know if you think of Barcelona had the best kits with no sponsor. Exactly. Well, that, yeah. no, that, they're the exception to the rule, but well, well especially in, in the nineties, sponsors lasted for years, so that yeah. was like they made the kit. Also, exactly. For, you could associate a sponsor with a kit, I think. Phil, there's, I, no, I right, there's no right or wrong answers here, guys. We're just, I'm, we're just exactly out there. I'm just putting in my two cents. Price. But Sean is right. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm wearing a kit with no sponsor on, so right? yeah. well, hush, you hypocrite. Hush your mouth. Um, next question: one to eleven are squad numbers. Oh. Oh, I'm going to be controversial again and say. Squad numbers. I ideally like to see one to eleven, wouldn't you? But you just don't see it anymore. Is that an answer? <laughs> <laughs> I'll go for one is that to you on the fence? Uh, oh, no. okay. If I could get it, I'd have one to eleven. But okay, no, that's fair. Train. That's fair. You know, some some people like squad numbers just to the fact. Obviously, certain players make the number, they make the the name from a and but outside of eleven, you think of obviously Roy Keane. Uh, Dwight York, United, Oligo Solskjaer, Robin Van Persie mm. sort of thing. So, again, it's all about opinions and, and preference. Uh, training shirts or training jackets? Uh, I'm going to go with jackets. It's hard one, that, because some training shirts are wonderful. I mean, others are just horrible. Uh, <laughs> um, no, I think they're probably con. Jackets, because jackets usually look you know, pretty solid, usually. 
If you sell a training shirt in a club shop, that is an absolute con. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Get your initials uh, on it as well. Yeah. Oh, and a little number and everything. 60 quid. <laughs> <laughs> there's actually people that will get the name on a training shirt like they are part of the squad as well I've seen it disgusting and the last question is online purchase or charity shop find it's got to be a charity shop find I yeah. think yeah yeah definitely well, it goes without saying well done, guys you passed you can move on to the next stage of the interview <laughs> uh, happy days <laughs> Yeah, so if we go back then, you talk about obviously the Knights being sort of the favorite, your favorite period of, of sort of football. So talk about some of your favorite footballers from that period who sort of lit up that period um, as, a, as in in terms of making you fall in love. Well, um, for me, the Naughties football is all about characters. I think the nineties had a lot of good characters as well. Obviously, your, your gazers and your kind of. I suppose to an extent, you know, like Letitiaes, they just had play, players with like a bit about them, but just a bit different. You know what I mean? Um, you just you know, you've, you even got that in the modern game. So for me, it's like you know, Ronaldinho is to stand out. He just he's levels above everyone else in terms of what he could do with football, what no one else would even attempt to do. Um, but even you know, like Rivaldo's, you know, Kaká's, you know, Andrei Shevchenko's, players who shouldn't be on a pitch, but somehow have made it. Because of their, their their little quirks, um, so for me, it's the characters and the stories behind them that, that make it for me. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can't deny like Ronaldinho, obviously, is sort of a man that, when it comes to naughty football. Uh, the other one that when we ask this question, we always get the answer as well is obviously Henri. Uh, just what you could do with balls magical. But as a, as a Portsmouth fan, I could, I could sit here all day and just list random Pompey players, but I probably shouldn't put you through that. But if I have to pick one, I'd go for Loire Loire. Like, what that guy could do. And talking about being a character and just entertaining, but but injuring himself doing backflips, like, stupid, never be allowed today, but so entertaining. (laughs) Colchester (laughs) Ledson. I do do remember his uh, somersault celebration. Yeah, do remember that. Definitely. Um, See, when I think of Portsmouth, I always think of Limboy Primus. Always, I always will do. Yeah. Definitely. Primus, definitely. When he like um master lead to God, but like that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So he's, he, runs a, he runs a charity in Portsmouth called uh, Faith in Football, and it's all about like uh you know getting people into the church and stuff. He actually um came to my school when I was at primary school, and uh like we opened a like a five sides like pitch at our school. And he came down and like everyone took a penalty against him. And I'm sure we all scored because he's too nice to ever actually try and save any. Well, I think, to be honest, Limbaugh Primus, if he's religious, he's better at crosses. But hey. 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 Very good. thank you. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have, if you could pick a favourite moment from sort of Naughty's football, Ooh. what what would that, that moment be? We'll start with you, Harry, on this one. Okay, um, well, that's only one moment I can pick, isn't it? And that's uh, when Seoul went up and lift the FA Cup. <laughs> what more can I ask for? That's a great day for football in general, that I think. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Could... you know, at the actual final, obviously, we're favourites because we're playing a championship Cardiff, but just it's still the underdog story, isn't it? That the years before that, you had, you know, it's just top four teams winning the FA Cup and we sort of broke that dominance. On the run-up to that, did you not knock out Manchester United where Rio Ferdinand had to step in goal as well? Yeah. Which, again, we just adds, just adds an extra caveat to that story, doesn't it? Yeah. It was one of those games where we should never have won and uh, we'd like, cleared things off the line and uh, the penalty probably wasn't a penalty, as I'm sure they will. Uh, you, you, you kicked Thomas Kuszak in the head. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then, obviously, Ferdinand had to go and goal for it. But, I mean, even... Any penalty when Montari's taken it, it's going to go in, isn't it? So, yeah, it's just another thing we get to say, oh, you're not out United. They're the only big team left in the competition at that point. Was it Montari who had that weird squad number? No, he was number 11, I think, wasn't he? He was number three. Oh, number yeah. two. Portsman. Like, we played at You think he's going to ask him Jan? Ask him Jan, yeah. Maybe. yeah no, was... Sunderland. Yeah, oh, Sunderland. <laughs> Again, that, completely different team. That's what happens when you bring fans from the na- National League into the big boy <laughs> conversations. No, I'm 90s and 2000s. 
So no, it wasn't um, Asamoah Jan. Uh, so I was going to go back, obviously, to the, the FA Cup win. I, I imagine, you know, remember the tagline for the FA Cup, the magic of the cup? It pretty much sums up that season, I'm guessing, for you, doesn't it? In, in oh, terms yeah. of beating United and then actually going on to lift the, uh, the trophy. Yeah, it was, you know, being like last year or just the year after I left secondary school, I think. So it's like, it was, so my dad was a season ticket holder, big Pompey fan, and was always like, I'm not going to Wembley unless it's to watch Portsmouth. And he got to do that. And, you know, it took him like 40 something years and took me like 16. So I can't complain. <laughs> Rub it in his face, do you? Oh, yeah, look at that. Sure. <laughs> That's it. Uh, Ollie, obviously being a, a big United fan. Yeah. Great decade for United. Um, Absolutely. Winning, winning the most titles during that decade, obviously the culmination of that is winning the double, the Champions League and the Premier League. Big conversation going around social media this week, just asking, is that um, 08 team, sort of that that sort of team that won the three in a row, what is that better than the treble team? So, being a massive fan of the noughties, were they? Um, no. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't want to be too blase about it. I think we may have had a better squad because if you look at the 99 team, we still had players like Roddy Onsen and David May and, you know, they, they were never really great. Um, but then you look at the bench at United in 08 and you had Park G. Sung, Darren Fletcher's, Carrick's, you know, players who would come in and do a job. Um, it was a great time to be a United fan and that I was going to my memory of it of the noughties in general, one of the standout memories for me is that Paul Scholes goal against Barcelona in the, in the semi-final. Cause I was, I was at work and the, um, much like Sean, I at the time worked in the hospitality industry. Um, <laughs> and my m- manager was a Northern Irish guy. And as you know, all Northern Irish people support Manchester United. So he had the laptop open. I just, I snuck through the office door and saw that goal go in as it happened, as I was meant to be washing dishes or something. So um, yeah, like we just erupted in celebration. So that was that was a, that was my favourite memory. What, what, what do you guys think? How do you compare the 08 team to the 99 team? Nice, nice throwing on to us there. Um, for me, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I think the 99 team, I think, it holds so much. It's held, it's held to such a high regard in terms of United fans' memory, especially if you, you was there and you watched it and stuff like that. Obviously. Younger younger fans probably may not have seen it, but would have seen the Ronaldo team. Probably don't only see it on sort of Premier League years or on YouTube. So probably didn't live it. So don't know sort of, you know, when you when you think of that season, I always remember the biggest memories of watching games with these two really. And, you know, Sean being a massive United fan then, even though he took uh-huh. it. Um, the sort of two games that stick in my mind, are, I watched the Liverpool game, in the FA Cup when Solskjaer came on and scored the winner in that game. I watched that with Sean, uh, James. And then the... Second semi- leg. The, no, the, yeah, the semi-final replay. Last when I think... Michael, yeah. Michael scored the penalty. And I, saved I may the penalty. Have cried, saved mm. the penalty, sorry. And yeah. I may have I cried think, a little bit. Yeah, I think I cried um, that night because I thought Burkamp was definitely <laughs> going to bury it. Yeah, um, I remember screaming at the TV, go, don't you leave United, don't you ever leave United. <laughs> now, and now I can't fucking stand him. So it's, you know, what a turn up for the box. Um, just for the fact he was cartwheeling for Man City after he scored a goal against United in the derby. So yeah, it's it's strange. But for me, I think the 99 team will always go down as the best just because of what they achieved. Yeah, Especially when you look how close they were run by Arsenal, you know, if, if 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 they, don't, if they score that penalty, we don't win the treble. You know, we only won the league by a point. So it was, all, it was very close Bayern, margins. Bayern Munich really deserve to win that final as well. If you watch it back, the chances that they had. Yeah, and yeah, big fan. And, and even the but, players, the United players, admit they didn't play well in that in that game. So, but they, they found a way to win, and that's what that team did. And, and if you see it, that, um, having said that though, if you see that Champions League group that we got, that draw. Was a group, group, of death, that, group of death, yeah. I think there was just there was one like sort of whipping team in there. Was it um, Bromby? Was it? Yeah, and Bromby. It was Barcelona and Bayern Munich. So, yeah, um, it's a tough one, isn't it? I think obviously football, the dynamics of football change. I think the 08 team would probably be more under the sports science umbrella. So if you did pit them Absolutely, against each yeah. other, there would always be that 
aspect of it. But for me, that ninety nine team just just great to watch. Like like we've just said, then like a lot of the games probably you know backs to the wall didn't deserve to get the results, but did, and just really good to watch either way. So I would still probably say that ninety nine team for me. Yeah, I'd say so, just. John. Well, similar to what Ollie said, I was just thinking then, you had Jonathan Greening on the bench and John Curtis. They're like, who are they? We got what, Champions like, League medals, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm convinced as well, Owen Hargreaves, that was the only time he was ever a good footballer during that during that year. He was oh, unreal. It's a shame about his injury, actually, but he was unreal. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. It's a shame. It's a shame. Uh, so, obviously, go back to you, Harry. Obviously, Pompey being in the Premier League, that must have been... I mean, oh. that's probably up, up there with it. Obviously, the FA Cup is the pinnacle, but even yeah. getting to the Champions League for Pompey must have been something you never never really dreamed of as a fan. Um, yeah, well, obviously, I started supporting Portsmouth. We were in Division 1 at the time of the Championship now. And, uh, you know, I was still quite young when we got up to Premier League, so I, I sort of hadn't known any different. I mean, I'd, you know, everyone would give you stories. Don't get carried away. We've seen them in all four divisions. And you know, like, I'm not going to see that. We're a Premier League team. We're, we're finishing mid-table, winning cups. Little do you know, I've now seen them in all four divisions. Um, but, yeah, it was an incredible time to, you know, to be a Pompey fan, to have 20,000 at Fratton Park every week. I've, you know, I, I saw games where United came down and lost. I've seen wonder goals uh, from Matty Taylor, things that, you know, I just couldn't even dream of seeing at Fratton Park now. It gives all those lower league teams hope. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Definitely. Well, we've, got five, we've got a five-year plan, Stockport. League, the championship in five years. Well, you had everyone to, everyone had, has a five-year plan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. You've, had to put that back, you've had to put that back here now, haven't you? Because of last year, you've failed. So. Oh, that was not upsetting. But... <laughs> when you hear, Harry, when you hear stories from Harry Redknapp talking about players like Carnu who could barely walk and yet he'd go on at the weekend and get a goal and get a result... And he did have this sort of ragtag bunch of sort of players. Teddy Sheringham sort of played into, yeah. into his footies and stuff like that. How how would you feel about these signings? This this we know he's not a wheeler and dealer, Harry Redknapp. He made that quite clear in his interview. But how do you feel about that? Was it great to see these sort of big names, if you like, join the club? Or how was it yeah, for you for as sure. a fan? Yeah, for sure. Obviously, uh, obviously, as you say, he's not a wheeler and dealer. He's just a great <laughs> manager. <laughs> Uh, somehow, no. Um, I have a very strange love hate relationship with Harry Redknapp. Uh, I think all Pompey fans do. Um, but yeah, the signings obviously incredible. Like they say, Carnu. I think he was at West Brom before us, and when he when we signed him, we're like, oh, he hasn't done anything for them. What, why have we got him? And he goes on to score like ridiculous amount of goals that season. Scores the goal that wins us the FA Cup. Uh, so you know he can't complain. Sol Campbell coming on a free like. Incredible, like David James turning his career around at Portsmouth. Like, it, it, it was just so many, and even like the young players he brought in, like uh, Cranchar, and you know, he, he knew what he was doing. And whenever he signed anyone, there's a couple of flops, you know, we had Nugent and the attacker never quite lives up to potential, but most of the time, you just knew whoever he was signing, they were going to turn good. Steve Stone and throw back to Steve Stone. Oh, well, Steve Stone was incredible for Portsmouth. <laughs> when, that, that first early few seasons when we were signing like old, uh, like experienced players. Oh, Pros- yeah, Prozanecki came in just before. Yeah. That was Red pre Nats, that was, wasn't it? Yeah, so a few full season full Rednat came in. Prozanecki was playing, and the man was unreal. Like there was a game where. I think he scored all four goals and we uh, drew 4-4 four, four, and he was just like, what more can I do? And like walked out of the dressing room, like, didn't speak to the rest of the players. Like, But um, yeah, and then the, when Redknapp came in the first season, we had Paul Merson turn up for us in the championship. And obviously he was just unbelievable for that season. But as soon as we're in the Premier League, we're like, all right, you, go, Paul. You, know, you can't quite do it there. But <laughs> yeah, those sort of older names, we had like Andy Cole come in at one point, uh, you know, Everyone wanted to come for Harry. I don't know whether that's envelopes under the table or whether that's just because <laughs> they loved him. I'm not sure. Probably, he's probably offering um, Sandra's jam roly poly. That's how we probably got him all. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. <laughs> through, through the uh, if we look on the flip side, what was the sort of your most controversial moment in Naughty's football? Is there anything that you thought 
you couldn't stand, you hated. Um, I'll start with you off if you've got anything that springs to mind. Well, straight away, I'm thinking the Man City takeover. Not once, but twice that <laughs> happened in like a space of 18 months. They get taken over by the Thai, that Thai chap and then by the uh, Abu Dhabi group. That just reeked of absolute <laughs> nonsense and still still haunts me to this day. Um, but the thing that really, I, t- I don't know about um, disappointing or controversial, um, but what immediately sprung to my mind, um, flipping over to Serie A, uh, I know this didn't come to fruition until uh, years later, but the whole fallout of Juventus being relegated to Serie B, um, I thought you know, all the match-fixing stuff going on in Italy at the time, I was a massive fan and still am a massive fan of Italian football. My brother lives in Italy, you know, I've got family over there and stuff. Um the stuff going on with Palermo as well. Um, Palermo, I don't know what you guys think, but one of the great pink salmon kits, one of the great badges. They're in like the fourth tier of uh, the Italian league now because of all the misdemeanors and financial stuff that's gone through there. And you think of the players they've created, Dybala, Cavani, um, yeah. you know, and uh, a few few others as well. But the whole thing with Juventus being relegated to Serie B and all the match-fixing scandals and the fact they managed to keep like Perlo and Nedved and Buffon and then get promoted <laughs> again. You know, well, I remember I was really sad when they got relegated. I know it's for the right reasons, but it definitely stands out. Yeah, definitely a Serie A sort of staple out of the Juventus. You think of Serie A, you think of the Milan clubs uh, and obviously then Juventus as well. So yeah, it definitely was a, you'd never, something you never thought you'd see, like, like you say, it was the right thing, but Definitely something it's like you, if, uh, you, you, we hear it over here all the time, you know, with, with what's going on with Derby County at the moment. You always yeah. hear it, oh, we'll, we'll relegate you. And what could be yeah. Juventus? You're like the biggest club in Italy. Like, yeah, sure, we'll relegate Juventus. <laughs> and it actually happened. And uh, I was kind of like, oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> there we are. Harry, anything yeah, sticks out in your mind? Obviously, they say the match fix and scandal was like mind blowing. And obviously, never seen anything quite like that before at that time. But on a more like personal, like, the thing that really like hurt me the most during Ortiz and sort of alluded to it a second ago is uh for some reason our chairman falls out of Harry Redknapp, sacks Harry Redknapp, and he holds this press conference, him and Jim Smith, and they're crying, they've got tears in their eyes, saying we don't want to leave, da, da, da. and someone asks a question of a club up the road, they ain't got a manager, are you going to turn up there? And the tears in his eyes, he's like, no, never, we'll never go there. You know, flash forward two days later, he's there with that red and white striped scar. <laughs> yeah, oh, mate, that was a gut punch seeing that. <laughs> but you loved that, John, didn't you? Yeah, well, I wasn't a fan back then, but. Oh, right. <laughs> no. I see. It was it was a casual, casual light. Since 2014. Oh, that's even worse. What happened <laughs> in 2014? That's when I got my season ticket. That's when I moved to the Southwest. Oh, wow. Right. Better reason. Not even a local team. I know, but Bristol. why is it? There's Yeovil, Bristol and Exeter, maybe. Well, I'm not watching that. Careful. Careful. Yeah, I would not. <laughs> <laughs> is that you trying to rile both of them up? You, Although the rugby podcast is pretty good, though. What's that? Well, it's not a rugby podcast, so I'm not talking about it. Exeter Chiefs, yeah. yeah. Anyway. I had trials of them, long story short. That's for another podcast. That's for another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, cool. So, but yeah, one of my uh, one of the moments I've thought about sort of controversial that I hated during the sort of noughties was the Premier League rights going over to ITV. Oh, yeah, League. oh, oh yeah, my massive. god, that stunk, it absolutely stunk, didn't it? But the Andy, Andy Townsend in his tactical van, whatever it's called, <laughs> tactics van, fuck off. Oh. No. And then it was Horrible. the the theme was the U2, wasn't it? Beautiful and... day. Beautiful day. You, yeah. I remember you pointed it out, Aaron, and it ruined it for me ever since. They'd be like, after the break, obviously there was breaks in it, which we never had on the BBC. Yeah. And they would show goals and be like, this is the West Ham. And you'd be like, well, obviously West Ham have scored then. Yeah. Really frustrating. Yeah. They wouldn't show near misses. They'd actually show proper highlights. Show the goals. Really frustrating. Yeah. yeah terrible. Thank, thank, well, I've got to say, thank the Lord, the arse fell out of it, but it really affected the sort of lower league clubs, didn't it? So I better not say that. That's not... It affected <laughs> um, Scottish football as well because um, yeah. they lost a lot of money and then Sky pulled the plug on Scottish football and then Scottish, the Scottish SPL disbanded and lost a lot of league. Um, yeah. Lost a lot of money, sorry. Um, so it affected... Yeah, it effectively turned the SPL into a two-horse race between Celtic and Rangers for that over that 10 years. 
Shocking, shocking. What about you, right. James, other than the Premiership? Oh, you put me on a spot a little bit now. I can't really think of it. Now you've just said that, it's really left a bad taste in my mouth watching that for that season. Um, <laughs> I can't really think of anything else, to be honest. Now you put me on a spot. But, um, yeah, ITV having match of the day. Hated that. Yeah. I think Sean? the Naughties the were good for lower league, to be honest, with the, um, what was it, NTL? Was it NTL who went bust? Um, like the cable? Really, no, uh, ITV Digital. Yeah. But that was the season in the noughties. We we got promoted to League One when we beat Rochdale in the playoffs. And the, the season before and the season after were brilliant for us. Uh, we had players like Ricky Lambert. We had John Ruddy. We had Liam Dickinson. I don't know if you remember Liam Dickinson. And, yeah. um, but then obviously the money ran out. And yeah, we dropped three divisions in three seasons. Um Ended up in the National League, National League North, believe it or not. Now we're trying to climb I can, believe, I can believe it. I can believe it, it given, yeah. given well, geographically yeah, so where that, you are. That was the high and low of that, that decade for me, getting promoted and looking to get to the Championship, but then being relegated. And mm. Carlton Palmer. Carlton Palmer messed us up a lot. Carlton Palmer. <laughs> we, managed Palmer. Us, we managed us for two seasons and in both seasons got us relegated. And he wore number seven. He gave himself the number seven, thinking he was back to mess. At least he didn't do uh, Edgar Davids and give himself number one. So he's at least that, isn't it? <laughs> That's oh, crazy, yeah. isn't it? Could, could be worse. Uh, another moment for me in the noughties, quickly. I know it's like probably the most famous, but it's just disappointing in the fact that, of who it was. But the headbutt in the World Cup final. Oh, yeah. yeah. You just think, what a way to bow out, like, if you're ending your career and that's the way you, you're not remembered, obviously, because he had an absolutely brilliant career, but this, like, like with James, it just leaves a sour taste in the mouth, doesn't it? When a player like that does something as stupid in the uh, World Cup final. Absolutely. Yeah, sorry, the, on... hey, sorry, my car alarm's going off. I need to get that. Okay. Great. <laughs> okay. Do you know how many league titles Zidane won with Real Madrid? How long was it? Did he, he signed in 2000, didn't he? I think. Was I, think it? It was, I think it was one. And I think it was Beckham's last season. I'm going was to say Beckham, one. Was Beckham there in 03? That's when he went there. I'm going to say three. Do you, I, I don't know. I'm going to say three. Aaron so, is right. He only, he only won one. Sorry. Oh. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Beckham, Beckham's last season before he went to... Um, was it uh, Beckham's last season before he went to LA? I think it, I think it was, yeah. Let's see. I know, I know me. All... Right. Um, moving on then. So we've got another little quiz for you. So what we've decided to do is drum up some sort of obscure naughty footballers just to test your knowledge and see if you know him. Oh, God. Um, I think James has got some little facts. So do you want to give a little bit of a fact file and I'll put the picture up, see? Yeah, so I think, I think uh, I've got it in the order that you're going to throw them up. So this player, I don't know if you want to give it a guess, this uh, player, well, ex-player now, uh, now manages uh, Enyimba FC in Nigeria. I um, don't know if that gives anything away just yet. Might be a bit too obscure. Bit um, too between 01 and 03, they played for Ipswich Town and got 35 appearances. Right. This yeah. is it's one of these. It's going to be something. Ipswich Town between 01 and 03. Yeah. Yes. Don't the picture. So up. they w- they would have been in the Premier League that 01 season. And this we've spoken about Ipswich before. Who's it bloody going to be? I can't remember. Previous clubs, Ajax, Real Betis, and Mallorca. And also capped for Nigeria oh. 62 times between 91 and 2002. Oh, is it, it's not... No. It's not... Why am I thinking of Michael Ricketts? No. Let's go for the pitch, Aaron. Go on, let's go on. If you've got it. Oh, what's his <laughs> flipping name? <laughs> oh. I was still watching... <laughs> Championship football at this point. What is his name? <laughs> it more is, of number, course. More than number 33, which really annoyed me as well. Yeah. So, You're going to have to put uh, me out of my misery. Fanidi George. Yeah. yeah. That's his uh, last name. Again, Aaron told me to put a, a bunch of obscure naughty footballers together. And this one sprang to mind just as a, I believe, <laughs> a Champions League winner with Ajax. Who certainly yeah, it was. Squad. Yeah. Yeah, to yeah. Which, I think, did he end up um, playing in the UEFA Cup with Ipswich? Oh, yeah, 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 they made it in their Maybe. first season, so about 2002. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, 35 appearances, seven goals. But yeah, currently a manager in Nigeria, which I found out on Wikipedia today. So lovely stuff. I remember so, Peter George because of his. Um, do you remember Nick Hancock's football nightmares? Yeah. Yeah. He feeds on that whenever he's got a goal. He wore his little cowboy hat. He got a cowboy hat. From the <laughs> oh, for Nidhi George. Yeah. 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 Where's Real Betis when he played for? When he did yeah. That. Anyway. Cool. Uh, next one, James. The next one. Um, okay. So this player played in the Premier League between 2000 and 2003 and initially started off with a loan spell at Birmingham City. Uh, that doesn't give too much away. But this one stood out because of their sort of previous successes prior to joining. 30 appearances and six goals. Previous clubs Bordeaux, Milan, Barcelona and Marseille. Capped 55 times for France. Oh, I know who it is. Who the fuck is it? Uh, we... <laughs> oh, it's not... Um, yeah. not he also not won Yuri. the World Cup. He also won the yeah, World Cup. It's not World Yuri. Cup and Euro 2000 it, winner. It's not Yuri Jorker. Have we spoken about this player? It's, it's He was like an obscure striker. He's a striker. Yeah, I Yeah, I know exactly who you mean, but I can't remember the name for the life of me. Let's oh, it's not up. Greg... It's not Gregory, is it? Yeah, I, I know I know the guy. It's just I can't think of a fucking name. Because <laughs> we, we've spoken about him. It's just like... It's just... Uh, it's not... Uh, is it Dugary? So it it's is. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Christoph yeah. Dugary. 30 appearances, yeah. six goals for Birmingham. So again, yeah. just one of these... I think, was it like a January window sort of loan signing initially? And yeah. then he helped keep them up and then they signed him permanently. I think he had 15... Uh, appearances in both seasons. But yeah, World Cup winner going to Birmingham City seemed like a, again, bit of a throwback type of move, really, for the North. Yeah, it was, the same, it was the same with Yuri Jorkiev. He joined uh, Bolton and oh, then went yeah. to Fulham for three games. Mm, mm. But uh, apparently a, pu- a pundit now for um, Canal Plus, is it called in France? Yeah. Um, so there we go. Next one. Now, this one's a tough one. <laughs> oh, God. Between well, between oh three and oh four, Bolton Wanderers. And I'll give you the stats for this player. It's part of the reason why I think Big Sam signed him. Two hundred and fifty five career goals in three hundred and twenty eight games. Ooh. Capped for Brazil ten times with one goal. Um and was recently sort of voted into uh Brazilian government uh, with 41,000 votes in 2014, I found out today. Um, only seven appearances for Bolton. Apparently had a bit of a weight problem um, and never quite... Do I give his previous clubs as well? Previous club, yeah, yeah. Porto, he got 130 goals in 125 appearances. Galatasaray, he got 22 in 24 appearances. And for Sporting Lisbon, he got 53 in 49 appearances. But I don't think so... he broke his duck at Bolton. No, and it was, he was there oh three oh four. Correct, yes, oh three oh four. Seven oh, appearances. Oh. What's his name? Can't we we think is we've studied this team a lot. <laughs> it's so annoying. And it's just one of those, as soon as the as soon as the it's just two, Middlesbrough and Bolton are the two teams who've kind of like it's like when you come, pra- come to practice love. for that maths exam and you just can't quite think of that formula yeah, when you get into like, there. This generally happened when I was at school. Our, our history teacher was teaching us all about like Nazi Germany, and then like we came to the exam, and it was about the fucking like Henry the Eighth and shit. And we're like, oh, what? <laughs> like, um, uh, right, I was say, that... I was say quickly that that happened to me in school as well. We was really, uh, yeah, we was. Um, it was for sort of cooking and stuff like that, right? We was, <laughs> but it, she was, she was teaching us um, English, and we turned up to the cooking class. <laughs> a shopping list. Shopping yeah. list. <laughs> yeah. I'm joking. Um, this is. Uh, it's, is it not um, Nelson Oliveira? It's not that guy, is it? No. 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 I can't remember. No. Go on. First name is the brother of Luigi. <laughs> Mario. Oh, what's his fucking name? <laughs> no, just please tell me. Go on, James. Mario Jardel, are we going to go for yeah, Jardel, yeah. Jardel? So yeah, I think Big Sam saw his goal scoring record was like, let's get him, and then I think he was a couple of, couple of stone too heavy when he uh, got to the Reebok Stadium. Gen- genuinely, uh, he was he was like he was like sort of the next big striker. If you look at his sort of record for Porto and Sporting Lisbon, it was un- unbelievable, and he was linked to massive clubs, and he turns up at Bolton and does absolutely nothing. Um, 
But yeah, it was a, it was a shock. It's one of them weird, again, one of them weird Christoph Duggery signings, but just didn't go anywhere, did it? Seven appearances, no goals. Mm. There's a lot Next of players one. like that. Yeah. Mm. There, there is a lot like that. This one, mm, more success, I'm not too sure. Five years at Middlesbrough between 02 and 07. So oh, if you studied the Middlesbrough team, guys. <laughs> oh, I should have said that. Cut that out. Cut that bit out. <laughs> um, two caps for Italy, but no goals. Previous clubs. Uh, Empoli, Palermo, uh, Sampdoria, and also Brisbane Raw after he played for Middlesbrough. Um, 80 appearances and 18 goals. It's not macaroni, is it? He's got it in one. Oh, he look at him. He's only got back in the game. Study that team. I did. I studied that team. Massimo <laughs> Macaroni. Yeah. Macaroni. <laughs> what a name. And you keep oh, on playing got... until like 2015 or something. You, you I think he's still playing. Play. I, think, I think he's still playing now, to be honest with you. Um, I had a quick look on sort of wiki. So I think he's still playing now. His nickname's Big Mac, just so you know. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Return of the Mac, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, you, last one, James? Last one. Um, so again, a few a few seasons in the Premier League between 02 and 06. Um, Argentinian, but never capped for them. Um, part of the Pizza Hut era that you'll remember on the shirts. Uh, and I've got here, he wore a mask when he celebrated, but unlike Robin Hood, he played for the rich and turned out to be poor. See that little <laughs> bit of research. Very good. Um, <laughs> currently head coach for, uh, is it Kilme? Kilmes in Argentina? If you say so, yeah. Uh, and 27 appearances and six goals uh, for Fulham in that time period. For Fulham, Argentina... And what, again, what I, I I remember him because when he did score, he would wear a mask. Oh, it does ring a bell. Oh, I've seen that's, on that's screen. Early for them, isn't it? Um, because oh. <laughs> he got the did, he got the, did he get the he got the number nine after Luis or oh, before? I think it was. I want to say after. After. Oh two to oh six. So I think no. he probably he probably inherited that. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I can't remember his name. It's, it'll be one of those ones to go. Ah, but uh, actually, I think Saha wore eight. For, oh, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, he did. He did. Right. Yeah, he did. Yeah, Lewis yeah. Saha wore eight for Fulham. He wore nine for United, didn't he? Yeah. That's right. No, can't remember for life of me. This is Facundo Sava, he was called. So, so maybe then from Saha to Sava, thinking, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That would work, but yes, just six goals for Fulham. It's weird because I remember seeing he, he might have scored in back to back weekends. I remember him seeing that mask again and again. I think he kept it in his shin pad, but um, there you go. They're my obscure naughties players. Very good, um, very obscure. It's good for you very to good. enjoy. Very good. Uh, so yeah, what we're going to do now, we're going to get into some. I know you love this feature because we did it on your podcast. Going to get into some Simons. <laughs> Gonna get into Stu Kit Simon. Uh, this is me and um, this is where we show you some kits, maybe from a specific era, team, tournament, anything like that. I'm gonna just ask you to rate them out five out of five. Uh, Kit Simons, I mean, um, John have devised these ones, James wants to be kept in the dark. Um, so we have gone for obviously being the Nauties, probably my favorite tournament. In the north is, is the 2002 World Cup. We saw quite a little bit earlier yes. on, which was obviously in uh, Japan and South Korea. So the first shirt we've gone for is that of Spain, Adidas. Uh, obviously, obviously that Adidas template from that tournament with a sort of netting underneath the the armpits obviously to to get rid of all the sweat so it's obviously a typical spain red shirt blue adidas stripes down the, the shoulders and arms a little spain flag on the right sleeve adidas and um the spain badge on either breast um what we're thinking with this kit we'll start with you ollie on this one um yeah, it's just before Spain turned into the uh, dominant team in uh, Europe and the world. I've got a, I've got, a, I've got a very similar Spain kit to this. I've got a signed Xabi Alonso 2010 kit. It's very similar. It doesn't really do anything for me, to be fair. So I'm going to give it two. 
two. Ooh, tough. Harsh, um, sorry. A little bit. Uh, no, it's all. It's what you think, mate. Uh, Harry, what what's your thoughts on this one? Yeah, it's no, got Raul as I was saying, it's it's very much a uh, it's a spanker, isn't it? It's, it's unfortunately, I think it just it's not iconic like some of the other Spain kits. It's just sort of middle of a pack because all Spain kits are quite nice, but it's just not you know the, the greatest. I've, I've gone for three. Can I say this was uh, one of Sean's picks, by the way? Because <laughs> 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 I had this kit and. I had an affinity to Spain in that World Cup because I had that kit. Sure. That's the one. That's the reason. Don't, don't worry. Just because they're slagging it off. Don't mean anything. Don't worry about it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, James, what are you Where thinking? Are you right now, anyway? Yeah, I just think the template really doesn't doesn't do it any any justice, does it? I feel like, yeah, it, like, like, like Harry said really there, it is just a Spain kit, isn't it? It's nothing special. <laughs> uh, and if you were on holiday in Spain, you wouldn't be sort of looking for the lucky, lucky man's knockoffs for this particular outfit, I don't think. I've said two as well, uh, two kit Simons for this one because Spain have had better kits. Sorry, Sean, but yeah. His face <laughs> looks so dejected. Are <laughs> <laughs> no, you everybody's opinion? All right. <laughs> <laughs> you liar. So, uh, what, what, you, what are you saying then? We'll come back to you again, Sean, about it. What were you? What was you going to score this one? This one, I'd score four. four. <laughs> I'd score four, and I don't need to give you an explanation. I've already told you no, I wore it. That's all I'm saying. I wore it. On and eBay, eBay, they're going for two hundred and fifty quid. So, well, all right. Well, well, money well. talks. Perhaps if eBay it... was uh, a guest today, they'd give it a better rating. It probably would. Doesn't mean it's a nice kit. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm on the same lines as, as you guys. I want a massive fan of this template on most teams, even though I did have the Argentina shirt. I don't know if you remember, James, uh, that was on this template. Mate, I only bought that just um, for Veron because Veron was at United at the time. Um, I got some pelters off my stepdad, obviously being a big England supporter, that I'd bought an Argentina shirt. <laughs> It's not the Falcons war now, step that. Yeah. It's only it, for that. It's, right. it's not. It's not a war veteran. I don't know why he got so. <laughs> <laughs> really, just really. He wasn't, he wasn't in Goose Green. I don't know what his issues were, but uh. yeah. Screw. <laughs> so yeah, I, it's the, not the greatest of this template. So I'll, I'd give it. I'll go two point five on this one for me. Ra- Raul looks good in it. Oh Actually, yeah, Raul looks good in anything. You <laughs> 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 said that too Harry. quickly, Harry. You said that too quick. <laughs> yeah. I love it, for Raul. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we'll move on to the next one from the 2002 World Cup. Um, so, oh, great kit. It is Italy, uh, home shirt. The only problem is obviously it's Kappa, so it's going to be a nice tight fit uh, for you. But yeah, it's light blue Kappa logo on either sleeve and the Italia badge over the heart. It's also got the World Cup badges on the sleeve on this one as well. You might be able to see. So Harry will keep you. Yeah, okay. Uh, what, uh, what's your thinking on this one? Uh, uh, yeah, so like you say, obviously it being Kappa does mean it's going to be tight and supporting a team that had Kappa shirts for a while. That does sort of put me off a little bit. <laughs> but, I mean, it's it's nice and clean, isn't it? And if, if there's one uh, Kappa, like if there's one team or club or in this case, like obviously, nation are going to wear a cap. It's got to be Italy, isn't it? Um, the purple sort of trimming, I don't quite like where it crosses, but I mean, it's just a nice blue kit, and I'm probably going. I'm probably going to be quite generous and give it as a four. Nice, Harry. Uh, sorry, Ollie. Um, this rates highly in my book. Um, immediately, I've got. I'm being thrown back to kind of like the old Roma kits. And uh, Francesco Totti as well. Um, yeah, it's just a pretty sec. There we are. There, there's the boys. It looks, um, lovely on. It, it looks lovely on them. I mean, I think if, uh, <laughs> if, if, yeah, if, if Harry fancies Raul, Francesco Totti was always my man. And um, <laughs> yeah, uh, he, I'd he's an absolute god. Know, I'd be interested to know what size Vieri wore for that, uh, knowing he's slightly a bigger gentleman. But um... yes, yeah, yeah. So, uh, 4.7. 4.7. Oh, so you 4. can get 4. one as well, James. 
Uh, I should, well, yeah, I mean, I probably need a couple of sizes bigger than Vieri's, to be honest. But um, I did, the first thing I put was Markdown for fit, um, which would be my concern. But, um, which player do you think's fit? <laughs> but no, if, if uh, Harry went 3.5, did you say? Or... I gave it a four. Oh, you give four. it a four, and then... Sorry, and then Ollie said 4.7. So I initially yeah. said 3.5, but I do actually like it's. You know what? This kit is almost like a f- real throwback to way back uh, yeah. with, the, with the old school leather balls and, and whatnot and when football has smoked and, you know, everything like I mean, that. I so I don't, think, I don't think it's that old. Well, no, I'm, it's giving, I'm saying it's, it's giving me that feel. That's what that's what I'm oh, saying about it. It's quite good. plain and understated, but it but it's oh, um, it's still a really nice kit. Nice to see Del Piero and Totti line up in the same team there as well. Um, but no, I, so I initially said three point five, but I've actually said four. So I'll give it four kit Simons this one. Okay, sweet. And um, Sean, I'd give it a four as well. Who's the number four? Is that Simone Parata at the right, far right, next to Vieri? Well, we, actually, know, we know what story is coming now, don't we? Yeah, no. Well, I won't do that one, but he actually looks like a 1930s footballer, doesn't he? In that he does, kit. Yeah. He's got his yeah. set apart and then he looks like he'd be wearing a, a monocle. <laughs> a monocle. <laughs> I'm not too sure it is. It could be. Um, do you want to tell the story, Sean? What about? Perotta? What, when he was born in the same hospital as me? Yeah. And... Went to the same primary school. <laughs> not just as you. Not just as you. All three of us. All three of us. Not the, the same school. year, obviously. <laughs> no. So his, his parents came yeah. over, didn't they? Then, to Manchester. Yeah. Yeah. So we went to school with a World Cup winner. Union, the morning really? so what, Is that in your face? Actually, there's um, there's three World Cup winners who were born in the same hospital. Jeff Hurst, the morning Parada, and who's the other one? There's, there's a one statue, more, isn't it, at one of the non-league grounds? Yeah, is, it... is that the, um, the Tameside Stadium where Curzon and Ashton play, I think? You're going to knock, knock out facts, Sean. Just knock out facts, Sean. I'm really sorry. Hospitality, yeah. mate. Yeah. Yeah. So is that, that all, is that all Tameside, Oswald? Yeah. Same hospital as me. There we go. I didn't know that. I generally didn't know that. So, um, But no, I'll, I'm a big fan of this kit as well. So I'm, I'm going to give it 4.2 on this one, I think. Reminds me of good old Italy when I was uh, massively into him more than more so than I probably am now. But yeah, there we go. Um, Next kit. Sorry, Jimmy yeah. Armfield is the third person that's in that oh, statue with ah. Perotta and Jeff Hurst. Well, all born, like all born in the same hospital, and all World Cup winners. So yeah, sweet. Uh, yep. Yeah, okay. Next kit is probably one of the big ones from this tournament. It is England. I mean, when I say big ones, I meant big teams, not sort of, not my favourite sort of England shirt. Definitely not. Um, we'll kick it off with, go on, Sean, you can kick this one off, mate. So it's the iconic stripe, sash, red sash down the crest. But you know it's England, don't you? No other team wears white internationally. Yeah, they do. <laughs> well, they do. Yeah, they do. Iconically, from this era, um, I mean, I never had this kit. I had the away kit, um, the red one. All I can think of is Nicky Butt when I see this kit for some reason. Best he was like, in the tournament. Yeah, he was a wild card as well. So you know, what, when you said that, the only the person I can picture in this is Trevor Sinclair. I don't know why. Michael but, Owen for me. Well, the yeah. squad, the squad was meant to be like have Gary Neville in it. Um, Skulls didn't go. Sorry, Skulls did go. He was a midfielder. Yeah. We he got replaced. Well, Gerard, Trevor, I think yeah, Gerard. Trevor Sinclair ended up wearing number four, didn't he? So was yeah. it Gerard? Yeah. Who missed would have been Gerard. Would have been and Gerard. I think yeah. Gerard's like because he had such an amazing performance against Germany in that five-one drubbing. And um, he went to the next big thing, and then he couldn't play. And then Nicky Buck was just forcing there to be a well, just to make up the numbers. He ended up being player of the tournament, didn't he? That's good. Uh, a picture of uh, got all back. So, are you going to score it then? I'll score that three. 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 Okay. Um, James? Yeah, obviously, it reminds you of that Beckham free kick at Old Trafford, doesn't it, as well? That kit. Um, 
got us to the tournament the, yeah. against Greece when we drew against Greece and celebrated like yeah uh, the same the tournament. Um, so <laughs> big nostalgia points in that respect for that. Um, I think again we watched that game together, Aaron. I could be wrong. Um, I'm going to yeah. give that um, three kit Simons out of five. We've had better kits as England, um, and although it wasn't an awful tournament, obviously did we beat Argentina one nil? Beckham scoring the penalty, as he just scuffed it down the middle. But um, yeah, three for me. We've definitely had better. Yeah. Uh, for England. Okay. Um, Ollie, your thoughts? Yeah, I pretty much agree with everything James just said. Um, I do quite like the placement of the number on the Umbro uh, label. The red stripe, I don't know what it's really doing there, to be honest. It just, <laughs> yeah, it just looks a bit cheap. Um, but yeah, I've got good memories of this tournament and and um, as Beckham's wearing the kit there, it, it just looks right, doesn't it? Well, I'll, I'll give it a three as well, I think. Great. And Harry? Yeah, I don't have too much else to add. Obviously, it's not the best England care ever, but like you say, the nostalgia and like the uh, off out of and that like iconic moment with Beckham and a free kick does sort of help it. Um, but yeah, I think I'll just stick with the putt there, the party line here and also go for free. Nice. Was this the Beckham metatarsal tournament? Yeah, uh, he, come, yeah. he come back, he come back. From the metatarsal injury that he got against, was it Deportivo? It was, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't 100%. Was it? And he scored the penalty against Argentina, didn't he? Sort of redemption. Yeah. Well, it was actually yeah. Aldo Duche who played for Deportivo, who was that's... Argentinian, who did him yeah. didn't he? In the Champions that's, that's, League game. That's correct. And it was, um, it was Pochettino who conceded the penalty, wasn't it, against Michael yeah. Owen? And it was a bit of a it was a bit of a dive from Owen. He got a oh, bit of oh, contact. Oh, it was 100%. Got a bit of contact <laughs> and he went down like some out of platoon, didn't he? Well... Don't matter now, does it? But my favourite moment from this shirt is obviously playing Brazil and obviously the Ronaldinho free kick, which he says he meant, he meant did he? Probably not. But, um, <laughs> well, do, yeah. do we also think that David Seaman pretended he hurt his back just out of sheer embarrassment as well? <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> he was like, I'm not right. I'm, oh, I'm just not fit. It's like, you could have told us that 10 minutes ago, David, before he knocked that over your head. Know, Were you not a uh, bit bewildered why Brazil chose to wear blue rather than like, yellow? Was it was it not a sponsorship thing? Did they not have did they not have rights to say you've got to wear this at this game or something? I'm not too sure. I think is it not just Nike, a bit too Nike, close Nike, to... had, Nike had monopoly over there. It's kit choice, I think I heard. Maybe, maybe. But I think maybe. maybe it's a bit too close to white. I'm not too sure. And obviously, they wear blue shorts as well. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. Could be. Doesn't matter now, does it? Anything. But, so yeah, I'll probably give it a three as well on that one. Um, it was all right. It was an all right. Yeah, the, the red, the red line down the down the uh, the side just looks weird. Weird yeah. now. When you look back, I think then people really liked it. But when you look back now, it's yeah. just like why? There's no. You just yeah, turned on your white. You turned on your white socks, pink in the wash. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the next one. Oh yes, look at that. Absolutely. I wonder, I wonder who's picked this one. Sean. <laughs> Actually, we, we both picked it, didn't we? Uh, I think I picked away, didn't I? No, you picked... No, oh, you picked yes, we both yeah, picked this one. Uh, so, yes, it is the Brazil 2002 home shirt. Uh, so, sort of that Nike template with the two sort of triangles um, down either side with the, the line that went around the, the back side. <clears throat> Obviously, Brazil won the World Cup. Two goals from Ronaldo in the final. James, let's kick it off with you then, mate. What are you thinking on this one? Again, nostalgia. The Ronaldo haircut yeah. that, I mean, I was definitely not going to get on, but it was a thing, wasn't it? There um, it is. There it is, uh, in all its glory. It's a really good kit. It's the, this is the template, isn't it? Because I remember even just like, just general sportswear without any badges on had this similar sort of the, the triangular pattern uh, with Nike. Yeah. Um, but it, it's, it's one that sticks in the memory for me. I'm going to go four kit Simons on this one. Uh, surely it. just based on that haircut <laughs> <laughs> uh, Harry what are you think on this one mate yeah so uh, I say nostalgic and obviously uh, iconic as well um, yeah once England were out of this tournament obviously Brazil became you know if, you, if you're going to get knocked out by someone you want them to go and win it right so Brazil became that team and uh, this kit was yeah I mean you see well you still see it around I mean, but you'd see it everywhere at that time so I've, I've gone for a whole five kit Simons Oh, oh yeah. nice. Go on, son. Go on, son. Um, Sean, 
come to you? Uh, yeah, I'd give it... See, I don't think it's as good as the early kit. Um, I think there's about six or seven teams who had that exact same kit but different colours in that tournament. Let's give it a three. Three, okay. Yeah. Uh, Harsh. Ollie? Right, um, this is the most iconic kit of the noughties, in my opinion. Um, if you were playing football at the park, you see someone else wearing this kit more than any other. Um, so for that, I'm going to go 4.9. Ooh, 4.9. Very, very nearly. Just, just missing the tip. Just the tip. Oh, just missing the tip. <laughs> Wonder what it has to be to be a. It's the best kit of the noughties and yet still not a five <laughs> for you, Ollie. So, yeah. what, what does it need? What does it need? Um, it needs <laughs> a, a, a number on it. I don't know. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what it's missing. It's it's missing the fifth star, which obviously they got for winning the World Cup. So it's the last kit they True. had with the four stars, obviously. And I like that about it, the sort of historical kits, obviously, meaning obviously it's not it's not the last time. Oh, it's from just before the last time they won the World Cup. Um, but no, like like you you said, it's just iconic. I, I love everything about it. Um, having sort of supported Brazil since like sort of '94, um, I was obviously rooting for Brazil as well. Obviously, still supported England, but definitely was sort of favouring Brazil anyway. And definitely Ronaldinho, Rivaldo. Uh, I'm obviously Ronaldo, Cleberson as well. I can't forget Cleberson. Shout out to Cleberson. <laughs> the linchpin <laughs> in that team. <laughs> uh, it's yeah, it's just great. I could have gone for the. I think we just stuck with the home shirts, but the away shirt was just as just as good, really. Sort of with the blue and the white, but yeah, it's that classic Brazil uh, yellow with the green, and it's just an overall. I just love that template as well. I like the Manchester United shirts in that template. The Barcelona shirts in that template were great as well. So. Yeah, it's definitely one that sticks out for me. Um, I'm going to go with Harry on this one. Give it a full five out of five because it's um, yeah, it's, it's quite spectacular. And last one, I've gone for I've I've picked the one that they didn't actually use in the tournament, but it's the one we all wanted to see. That's all I'm going to say about this next one. And your last one is not not Ronaldo, the Cameroon <laughs> from 2002, which is obviously the very famous sleeveless shirt. Obviously, they had to wear sort of like black sleeves in the tournament. FIFA being footy duddies or assholes, whichever you want to call them. Um, so, yeah, we've gone for the sleeveless. Let's kick it off with you, Ollie. What are your thoughts on this absolute masterpiece? Um, I mean, if you were, if you didn't know football and you didn't know the history of it, you wouldn't know it's a football top, would you? No. Um, Aussie rules, innit? Exactly, yeah. Aussie, <laughs> Aussie rules, um, you know, low, low, low division basketball team. It's 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 all there. I do like the Puma badge in the middle. I, I want the thing is this is what I'm thinking. I want to like it, but I just don't. Oh, I like I like it Ooh. for its niche, you know, sleeveless. I like the ambition behind it, and I might have even liked it more had they been allowed to wear it. But the fact is, it just doesn't look good. Um, so I've got to go on the. He's got to pass the eye test. Um. <laughs> Uh, but I do like the history of it, if that makes sense. Yeah, and the and the story behind it, but not the actual look of it. So I'm, I'm just tricky. I'm torn. So because I'm torn, I'm going to go straight down the middle. Just go free. That's fair. That's fair enough. Um, Harry. Yeah, I feel like it's it's definitely Marmite, isn't it? You're going to love it or you're going to hate it. Um, but I can't help but sort of love it. You know, like yeah. how amazing would it have been if they actually got to wear this properly? Like, it, it, it probably would have gone down as the best kit of all time in in yeah. world history. I think <laughs> just just like for the color around where the, the sleeve should be, like oh, oh it's got a hard one though. Uh, I'm I'm gonna go with like I'm gonna give my first half point and go for four point five for it. I think. No, it's all good. It's all good, Sean. Well, I actually thought this would be five, but. The one they wore for the tournament, I actually prefer with the black. They've got the FIFA made them have the little black sleeves, didn't they? The black actually sleeves, prefer, yeah, yeah. I should prefer the black sleeves bit. Um, and a little story as well. It actually looks good there, to be honest. A um, little story <laughs> as well. The tournament after, because he got in trouble off FIFA, they created Puma, created a kit for them, which was a onesie. So the top yeah. and the shorts were attached as like a little. F you to set blast sort of thing. 
and, and again, they got fined as well for that. Um, yeah. But that kit alone, I'd say, I'll, I'll give a half point as well. I'd say 3.5. But if it had the black sleeves, 4.5. Well, um, and James? Well, I am disappointed in this group of people we've got with us tonight. <laughs> this is one of the most iconic and one of the great kits. I just think as well, just I mean, Puma always do great kits, especially sort of for the African side. It's got like the retro Cameroonian badge. Remember when they wore that as, as a, almost like a, as a massive crest mm. on the yeah. shirts um, at previous tournaments? Like a coat of arms. Oh. Yeah, and like obviously we've just seen a picture of Etu there wearing it, but you imagine sort of Jeremy, Lauren, Wome, Rigobert, Song all wearing it, jacked with their arms out. I think just quite an imposing figure as well, just to play against. I just think it was a really good idea and a concept from Puma. It's a shame they couldn't go through with it. I agree with what Harry said, the sleeves, the collar, I like the colour patterns with that. Um, that obviously go with the Cameroonian flag. Um, for me, it's a five all day, absolutely all day. I'd love that. Um, I am. I mean, I've not even looked up the prices. If if Sean Spain shower of shit shirt is two hundred and fifty <laughs> quid on eBay, I can only imagine how much this is going oh, for on eBay. Yeah, and yeah. I would absolutely love to have that as part of my collection. It's it, it's one of my all time favourites. Yeah, I fully agree with you there, James. I mean, it's it's just it's just everything about it. It's iconic. Sort of, I agree with you with a sort of retro lion badge. Straight away, start thinking of Roger Miller in the ninety World Cup. How old was he? Like fifty odd, scoring, yeah. scoring yeah. goals, going, running to the corner flag, um, and uh, the trim. None of you mentioned the trim. I just think the trim that it just adds so much more to it. Sort of the yellow and the the red, um, and a little bit of green that you can see on the outside. Just a great kit, and I think I think it was ruined by the black, the black sleeves. I just think it just took away how innovative it was, uh, and how they were sort of Puma was trying to be outside the box. Which is what we all want, you know. There's too many templates these days, um, you know, and it's just something totally different that you probably know, will never see again, sadly. So yeah, five all day for me. That it has to be. Um, There's a World Cup coming up in that. Qatar, and you think most teams will probably want to go short sleeves for that one, but we'll have to start a campaign online, see if we can get. Sort of... <laughs> if uh, if FIFA allowed them to wear it, do you think everyone's third kit that year would have just? Oh, that'd seasons? be great. That would have been great so. if they all just, just cut them off as well. If they had like a, a ruffled <laughs> edge just going for it. It'd be great. Like the Flintstone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Flintstone, exactly. Yeah, so that was uh, Kit Simons, and uh, you're listening to Talking Kit. Okay, so yeah, a little feature we've not done for a little while on, on the pod because we've got two guests on. I thought, yeah, let's have a a little game of shirt impressions. So this is where we send someone free shirts and they have to tell us sort of the first player that comes to mind and when they see that shirt. So I sent the shirts over to Ollie and he's been very kind and obliged and sent me three players that he first thought of when he got these shirts. And Harry's going to try best to get in the mind of Ollie being mates. You know, you think you might have an inkling of who you're going gonna to pick for each shirt. We'll, we'll start off with um, with this shirt, and that is the 2000 to 2000. Oh. And, no, is it, sorry, it's 99 to 2000 um, Chelsea home shirt, and that's got your, your typical Chelsea shirt. But then the old crest with the CFC and the lion, it's Umbro, auto glass, and it's got the you can't really see it, but it's got the Umbro sort of. Down the sleeves, down the, I told Jay about, and he's like, he thought he was saying Umbro rather than the actual logos <laughs> in the United shirt. So, yeah, Harry, who did Ollie say this shirt reminded him of when he saw it? Oh, God. Did he say it's 99 2000? So it's 99 to 2001. Sorry. Oh, it's a couple of, couple of seasons. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, back when you could have shirts for two years. Yeah. A good old <laughs> times. <laughs> um, who would Ollie have said? <sighs> See, I'm well, starting to doubt myself if he was ever in that shit. Uh, I'm gonna say this isn't gonna be what Ollie said, but I'm gonna say it's he said Hasselbank <laughs> head in hand. You can, you can tell by his Harry, reaction, Harry. What kind of players do I like? 
Yeah, I'm just trying to <laughs> come up with someone I'm pretty sure I've seen in it. <laughs> I've seen my brother in it, but it's not going to be him, is it? <laughs> oh, I should have said that. That would have been good a really good footballer. Um, no, so Oli actually thought of this player, Harry, unfortunately. See? The man, oh. the legend, John Frank was, Zola. That was my original thought, and then I was like, I'm not sure <laughs> if it's too late. Too obvious. How, how old was Zola there? He looks about 45 there, doesn't he? Probably he, was. He looks, he looks younger now. Then he was there. Yeah, he does. Well, he left Chelsea yeah. in 2003 and he went to Cagliari until yeah. 2005, I think. So, yeah, he put on a few years. That um, <laughs> that sort of back heel slash back kick from the corner was... Oh, it was amazing, wasn't it? One of my favourite goals. Goal. Yeah. yeah. Great, great player. Great player. So, it's um, none for one at the moment, Harry. So, let's get into the next one. Um, done the the next way. Come on. <laughs> Get in mind of Oli now. You need to get into sort of his way of thinking. You know the, you know the players are like. The next one is this. It's the Arsenal 2002-2004 to shirt. Obviously, you think of the Invincibles um, winning the league in a shirt. So, who's the first player that, that Oli thought of? When Surely there's only one, isn't there? Yeah, it could be. You thought, that, you thought that last time and you got it wrong. So, you don't know. Come on out. I'm doubting myself right now. I'm thinking, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, whatever I'm going to say is going to be... Oh, mate. To me, I'd say it was Thierry Henry, but Oli's going to turn around a bit. Oh, I said Freddie Lundberg, isn't he? I don't, you tell me. Who's, who's he said? He's got, he should have said Thierry Henry. He should have. Is that, is that your final answer? Yeah. Robert Perrins. Oh, thanks, you got it right. You got it right. Well done. Don't, don't he, went, he went for Alex Manninger. Who'd have thought? Yeah. <laughs> Lorraine. He's not he's not he's not Leno. He don't wear the kits like Leno. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah, that's true. It's <laughs> great. Yeah, it's, it's gotta so, be you know, hasn't it, for that one. Yeah, but uh, when we were talking about sort of doing this, I thought the Invincibles, you would think of Henri, but that, that team had so many players, you know, you think oh, of sure. uh, Gilberto, Perez, um Vieira, Vieira still. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's so many players, Lauren, Ash, Paul. I, I know you mean, you, you obviously doubt yourself, but he's the standout man, isn't he, for that team? He's just the, the first person you probably think of. Um, okay, so, you, you know, you're one for two. You can save it now, Harry, with this last one. Um, Pressure. This, <laughs> Yeah, a little bit. This is the 2008 to 2009 AC Milan shirt. Who do you think... He has been mentioned in the pod already. So wow. I'll give you a little bit of a clue. I think so we mentioned two think? players who were playing for AC at that point. Oh, well, some, I know, some I know who I would say because he he scored a goal past Portsmouth wearing it. But I'm starting to yeah. doubt. I'm starting to think Ollie's going to go for the other player we've mentioned. <laughs> but it's got to be Ronaldinho. But if you said Kaka, I'm not going to be happy. <laughs> Oh, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Your favourite player of all time is Ronaldinho. What are you doing? <laughs> what did, what did, did you say Ronaldinho? Yeah. He, he said Ronaldinho, yeah. He scored against Pompey in that, in that kit. <laughs> yeah, Ronaldinho. No, it's Ronaldinho in Barcelona, not in AC Milan. Yeah, Kaka but, won the Ballon d'Or 2008. 2008, he scored against Pompey in that kit. Yeah, 2008, <laughs> Kaka scored against Man United. I'm not a Portsmouth fan, you... Idiot. Yeah, he's your favourite player. I, I think wow. I think I can't believe the feature. Just, was, yeah. <laughs> this feature has just brought the end to one of the, the greatest podcasts out there. I can't yeah. believe it. Oh, man, there's, yeah. no more, there's no more team of our lives. Oh, what have we done? Like, what have we done? Yeah. <laughs> like single of our lives. Yeah. <laughs> um so unfortunately, Harry, you only got one out of three there. So I mean that's not bad, it's not the worst. Well, I think when these two did it, you two didn't get one at all, did you? No, I think we we had, we were poor. You do start to doubt yourself, don't you? I, I've been there, Harry, where you, we start to overthink it and overcomplicate it. But, but uh... the the, prob- the problem is though, if you're playing against Sean, it well, could yeah, literally so. be it could be anyone. It could be Mario Jardel. It'd be someone that's played about two games. It'd, it'd, it'd <laughs> pull out the most obscure play that you could ever think of. Yeah. Well, you need to know. So... <laughs> So no, unfortunately, you, 
you didn't get it right. But you got what you got one. That's enough to take away. We'll do a leaderboard. Yeah, we won't do a leaderboard like you guys because you know we're not that mean. <laughs> Thank God. This is why we had to stop playing games between us because uh, Ollie would ask yeah. me questions and I'd start blanking and being like, "Stop it! <laughs> Too much pressure." I had to make him stop. <laughs> Oh well, there's always, there's always, we'll get you on again. You can have another goal. Don't worry about it. Um, we can see if you can redeem yourself. All right. Um, All right. right we're going to get into the pinnacle now. That the the probably the best feature of the show. It is going to be Desert Island Kits. <laughs> Welcome back to Talking Kits. This is the Football Kit Podcast, run by Free Football Kit Fanatics for Football Kit Fanatics. We're getting into the crunch part of the show. The bit we're all been waiting for is as a kit. This is where we're going to ask each of the guys to pick a home, away, and a third shirt that they would take to a desert island with them. So, yeah, let's get straight into it. So, Harry, we'll kick it off with you. So, can you tell us which home shirt that you've chosen um, for for the feature? Yeah, so I've chosen the uh, Real Madrid home kit from 2005 to 2006. Um, so, re- two, well, two sort of reasons. First reason is that this is around the time that I'd really started getting into La Liga football. And uh, for my sins, Real Madrid were the first team I, would like. I was really attracted to. This is the kit that I remember the most. Uh, obviously, it's just plain white for black, the Adidas stripes. It's, it's got a collar. There's just not much more you can want from a from a Real Madrid kit, really. Yeah, it, now it's. Um, I think I'm not a massive, massive fan of Real Madrid, but yeah, it just kind of just brings back sort of memories of like you say, like the big man there, Zidane. Yeah, um, it's the only player you think of in that shirt. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, was Ronaldo still there at the time? I think. Yeah, um, it's like sort of peak. Uh, got to go here and off like. Beckham yeah. was there, Ronaldo's there. Uh, Virgil sure. Carlos, maybe, plays like that. Yeah, Carlos yeah. would have still been there. Um, Guti. Guti, yeah. Guti would have been for sure. Yeah. Salgado. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the, other, the other reason is it's, it's the first sort of... Because uh, my dad always installed in me, but I was not allowed to wear any other English football shirt. So my football shirt collection came straight from abroad. And this was like the, yeah. the first sort of... Uh, one, I, I, I purposely went out and got myself rather than someone buying it for me or giving it to to me sort of thing. Nice. It's a, it's a good pick. So this would have been the season that, as you mentioned before, Ollie, that he would have won the only league title. At, uh, I believe so, yeah. Nice little tie-in there, on, uh, unintentional. Um, well, no, great, great pick. Um, James, what's your thoughts on it? Yeah, obviously it is like the Galacticos era, um, so it's a, it's a really good pick. It's quite understated, isn't it? They've not overdone it with anything. It's not too flamboyant out there. It just sort of speaks for itself, doesn't it? Um, but it's a really nice kit. Yeah, I like it. Um, Sean? All I can think of is Ronaldo um, wearing this kit. Um, Would... it's, it's, it's Real Madrid playing, isn't it? <laughs> all right, all right. So, yeah, what you see, Sean? Again, I'm not a fan of, um, <laughs> not a fan of Real Madrid, really. I'm glad we brought you in for that, Sean. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> uh, okay, Harry. Yep. Yeah, no, I'd say, uh, like I say, I'm not a big fan, but you know, classic, iconic Real Madrid in white, black. Uh, was it the first one with Siemens as well? I think it may have been, or around that Maybe. time. Um, but yeah, no, obviously Zidane looked great in it. So, yeah, what are you picking for your away shirt? Yeah, so to, to jump from one the Liga Giant to the other, it's a it's a Barcelona. Well, they originally was their away kit in two thousand three, two thousand four, and I think I think it was their third kit in two thousand four, two thousand five. Um, it's not it's not the most beautiful kit ever, but the reason of I picked it is because. I went. I was very lucky that uh, I got to go see Barcelona play, and uh, this was a Barcelona shirt that probably was, you know, the cheapest one he could get me. But my my old man bought me bought it with me uh, on that day, and um, obviously I went to. It was a few years later, and uh, it happened to be Messi's debut. I obviously didn't realise that until a couple of years later. But we looked it up. I was like, 
oh that little kid that came on and scored <laughs> that's messy you know yeah wow. and wow. but the most like amazing thing about that day was i went to the the uh i went in a portsmouth top to to the thing and the reason my dad ended up having buy me a top in the first place there's this little and uh this little uh serbian boy on the coach of us and he asked he looks at my top and he's like oh Dejan Savanovic. And like, I don't think he spoke much more English than that. And my dad was like, hang on. Like, like on the way back, he like, you gave me that top. And he's like, give the little boy your Portsmouth top. And I had, so I gave my Portsmouth top to this boy. And I just hope that every now and then he still like, you know, looks up for scores. And he's like, oh, Dejan Savanovic, how's Portsmouth? And so it's that really good that story, to be honest. Like I brainwashed them Serbian into being a Pompey fan through this Barca kit somehow. That's, that's Serbian. Yeah. Is Alexandra Mitrovic <laughs> <laughs> started the Serbian sort of factor of the Portsmouth fan club and all that? Takes yeah. coach, coach loads over to each game. You never know, could have happened. Um, I, I love this kit. I'm obviously Barcelona is sort of my second team, not so much in the last couple of years, just due to the fact what state they're in. But yeah, so it's that it's a similar, it's a night template from the Brazil shirt we saw earlier on in uh, Kit Simons. Um, like you say, it was the away shirt and then. Obviously, t- teams used to recycle it the next season and drop it down to the third. Because I, when I, when you sent me this straight away, I thought of Ronaldinho, but that obviously would have been the season. It was the third shirt. Um, but no, I, I love it. Sort of the, the navy blue with the the sort of regular blue and sort of red um, diagonal stripe down the side. The gold sort of night night tick. I think I know. I think it's a great shirt. Nice collar on it as well, which had. Yeah. Um, no, great pick, great pick, um, Sean. Well, I've never, I don't think I've seen Barcelona play in this. Um, but again, I'll judge it on would I wear it on a night out, and I think it would be a good shirt to wear on a night out. <laughs> I think you'd agree. My my only yeah. criticism of it is I wish the uh, I wish the like the sash went the whole way. Really, looking at it now, it's yeah, a little yeah. bit awkward. Yeah. yeah. I think I, again that's just because of the template in it because obviously yeah. had the netting round where it kind of stops, which obviously would have stopped that lapping. But no, it, it, you're right, Sean. You could wear it on a on a night out. Yeah, uh, James. Yeah, I, the collar. I think the collar on this makes it. It's very reminiscent of Nike in that era. Uh, it's almost similar to a pick that we had in the last sort of the last uh, podcast, which was like a Roma kit. It's almost like that oh, yeah. um, golf type collar the golf shirt type collar but i really like it um yeah, it's a really good pick i think out of the two that you picked so far this would be the one i would go for i think i do really like it um we know that barcelona can be quite loud certainly for the home shirts and sort of their 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 patterns for the for their colors but i really like this one yeah yeah uh ollie any thoughts on it sorry i didn't involve you in the last one but that's I'll, all right it's all right I, i'm I not a mass it. Out of all the Barcelona kits out there, I, I'm not a massive fan of it, if I'm honest. Um, it kind of just reminds me of Crystal Palace and like <laughs> Ooh, yeah. their their away shirt every other year. Um, <laughs> it's 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 all right. It's it's yeah. just all right. I'm it's sorry. Right. I think the goalkeeper um, got short changed in that one, didn't they, with the template that yeah, he got? Yeah. 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 Uh, just looking at that Barca team, obviously you've got De Boer, you've got Koku, you've got Cliver. Um, Overmars, a young Iniesta, Xavi, and Mendieta there. So, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, um, yeah. Good, good times, good times. Um, and we'll move on, finally then, Harry, to your third shirt. And yeah, yeah let, let us know what you've you've chosen for this one. So, it's uh, I couldn't get away without <laughs> doing a Portsmouth kit. So, I've gone for a Portsmouth third kit. I think, oh, do I remember the year I picked? I think it's the uh, 2009 season 2008 uh, two, season two, uh, 2007 2008 oh, okay so it is the fa cut winning yeah all right I, yeah um <laughs> let's get that in there <laughs> yeah um yeah because it was our sort of would strangely would been made by canterbury for this, this year what well, obviously didn't last too long in football but big rugby mate yeah. and uh we, we we were one of those clubs that try try something new every season for our third kit and this was our first like black third kit, and it stuck around for a few years. And I just remember as a kid being well, not well, you know, teenager being obsessed <laughs> with this black and gold uh, one, and I, I wore it all the time. I just loved it. Uh, like 
it's, it's got so much going on that it's not the greatest, but the, like, the little gold dots are like reflective and they all had some sort of meaning. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it was, I, it, it was unique for us to move the badge into the centre. It's always usually on the heart. So I was like, that, you know, it was novelty. Um, so it's just, again, like the other two, it's, it's one I owned and one I wore all the time. Oh, yeah, I think it's uh, a good, a, a great shirt. Um, James, come to you. Yeah, you mentioned obviously it's normally a rugby uh, sort of uh, make, if you like, um, which again is different. I, I quite like the fact that it's almost on the collarbone, isn't it, as well? That so it is quite different the, the placement of it. Not a fan of the badge in the middle. Um, again, you've used it as a unique selling point there, Harry, but. You have to be marked down for that. Although the, the 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 black and gold is great, um, and the and the sponsor isn't too too big, so it's a it's a really nice kit. Was this one? Would this one have been given away to a Serbian boy at any point, or <laughs> was it still part of the collection? No, I've I've still got it somewhere, but I'm pretty sure that I wore it so much that it just says like okay, Ollie, what what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, the black black and gold works works well, doesn't it? Um, yeah, I do remember this kit, especially Sol Campbell on it as well. Yeah, it, it, it it's nice. It's relative for, for a lot going on. It's still quite tidy and quite neat. And I don't mind the badge in the middle, to be fair. Um, but yeah, I do like black and gold. I think it just works well. Yeah, yeah, you're right, uh, Sean. See, I don't I don't think there's enough black kits around. To be honest, I like a black kit, um, especially with the yellow. And and I didn't realise it was reflective. That's that is unique. It's like yeah. Tesco supermarket bouncer vibes, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's that's, what, that's the first thing I thought of. Yeah, when I saw so it. Are you, you, are you saying you wouldn't wear this on a night out, Sean? <laughs> no, this is not a night out sort of shirt. But yeah, the first thing I think about is well, rugby, only because of the sponsor. Canterbury. Yeah. Have you ever sponsored anyone else, Canterbury? Not I think at the same them. time they were, they were doing a like a couple of like a uh, foreign teams, um, but I think they, I think for the, the division they set up to do football kits went bust pretty quickly. Ah, uh, okay. I'm thinking uh, Papa cool. Boobity Ops when I see this kit as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, after after say, <clears throat> I think you had one similar. The next season, and the Canterbury was in gold. Yeah, um, I have to say as well. Obviously, I've I've got pictures of every kit, and obviously a player wearing it. Could I find a picture of someone wearing this kit, Harry? Absolutely, fucking not. Could I? It was <laughs> so hard. It was so hard to find a picture. My, like that's why it's so small. I'm gonna say that's the smallest I've ever seen Sol Campbell. Oh. I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have you not seen him after a shower? Um, <laughs> But yeah, so Fair I think enough. this is from I think this is from your FA Cup run actually when you beat Ipswich one 0 That's how I know we had got to got it off. I think it was the BBC Suffolk website for that game. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. That's how that's how much. So don't say I don't go out my way for you, Harry. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I was there for that one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but no, again, um, it was it's a great pick. Um, good shirt. Obviously, means a lot to you being sort of that season. You won the FA Cup, so. If you had to pick one um, to keep, which one would you go for? I think we know the answer, but which one would you go for? Oh, God, that's quite hard, but it's got to be the Portsmouth for one, isn't it, unfortunately? Yeah, of course it has. Of course it has. I think we all knew it was going to be that, most definitely. Um, so, no, good, good picks. You, well, you've you redeemed yourself after the poor shirt impression <laughs> show, mate. All right. <laughs> uh, Ollie, let's move on to you, and let's get into your, your first shirt. What is your home shirt? You're taking away on a desert island. Absolutely. I believe my first shirt um, is the uh, 2001 Fiorentina shirt. Home shirt. Oh, there we go. Look, look at it. Look at what that. A, what a way to start. What a way to start. What a way to start. Thing of beauty. Right, let's talk you through it then. First of all, the colour. A nice little violet number. Uh, iconic Fiorentina badge. Um, we we're speaking earlier about sponsors, or my opinion on sponsors, making uh, making a shirt. And the, the Toyota, it's basic. It's not, you know, not it's not a mess. It's not a picture of a car or anything. 
very just bold writing. It works well against the color in the background. The little mod spot, the Italian mod spot next to the badge, just yeah. just it's just a winner on any any shirt. And then it, rarely I like a long sleeve shirt, but this kind of works with the red trim and the white going down the uh, shoulders and, and the rest of the arms. And that collar is amazing. And what this shirt does, and this is the reason I like football shirts, it reminds you of, you know, I was speaking earlier about Naughty's players being characters, which we don't see much nowadays. Batis Stuter was a character. Rui Costa was a character. Mauro Bressan is a character who wore this shirt and scored the best ever Champions League goal of all time. Overhead kick from 40 yards out against Barcelona in this shirt. It's, uh, it, it's uh, yeah, it's amazing. It is great. One player you didn't mention that I didn't know wore this shirt. It's only in my research uh, that I found this out. Was this man? Was, oh, Adriano. Oh, uh, Adriano, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Obviously wore this shirt. I didn't know, didn't know he played for for Fiorentina. Didn't spring to mind. The only thing that annoyed me, though, you can't really see it in that picture, wore number 90. So, yeah. Oh, not, yeah. That is, that is not, not good. Not great. Sh- but, surely version doesn't look as good on him. No, you've got to go no, long no. sleeve. I think in that one, you've got yeah. to go long yeah. sleeve with that. Definitely. Loving the Mizuno. Shout out to Mizuno. They're great, aren't they? They as are. A, as, they a, are. as a kit maker, and um, the only way you can mark this down is because obviously Fiorentina were sponsored by Nintendo as well. I think talking about sponsors with that previously, but um, I really like that kit. I, I think as a long sleeve, that definitely adds to that kit. Yeah, most, most definitely, Sean. Fiorentina have come for a lot on Desert Island kits, haven't they? Um, <laughs> I think they've been a chosen uh, Yeah, um, it looks like a racing car driver top, doesn't it? <laughs> and I quite, I, I quite like that actually. Um, Night out, Sean. What are you saying? Ah, uh, maybe fancy dress. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, that... like, like, like. No, no, that, no, please don't say Adriano on black. I know, yeah, yeah. God, we don't want that. God, no. Come on. <laughs> you're not Jim Davidson. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> Anton Griezmann. You're not. You're not any of them. No, but yeah, like um, Oli said, it's you think of like with this, with the sponsor and the colour, you think you think back to do it, don't you? That's all I can think of. Do. It's like, you do. Iconic Serie A in the nineties, iconic in itself. It's a nineties. It's a nineties, Sean. Serie A in the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Harry as well. What you what are you thinking on Oli? Yeah, choice? I mean, it's what else can you say? It's just a lovely shirt, isn't it? It's, Iconic. I'm sure if you look this one up on eBay, it's going for a few quid and all. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, I agree with all of you. It's just beautiful. Like you won't think purple and red would ever go together, but it really does. And the white obviously helps it. Uh, the pattern on the sleeves, I really like the little crisscross. Um, Mizuno, don't see a lot of. Apparently, next season they are going to be start supplying kits. I don't know what team it's for, so look out for it. You'll probably hear it on a future episode of Talking Kit. But yeah, from little social media posts you've done, it looks like they're getting back into manufacturing kits, which which I'm, I'm looking forward to. Toyota, yeah, like James, second only to Nintendo for me on Fiorentina. But then the Nintendo is obviously with Feeler as well, which obviously is great. But no, great kit. I'm glad you've gone for the long sleeves, Ollie. Definitely adds to it. Nice tight cuffs, which you, you want to see. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, so no, really strong start. Um, so shall we move on and then go into your away shirt? I um going over to La Liga for the away shirt and uh, for an Atletico Madrid number, um, 0607. Now, it doesn't look like a football top, in my opinion. What it looks like, it looks like this, Sean, you could wear on a night out, it kind of looks like a Ralph Lauren almost rugby top. Yeah, you have, I'm to not, pop, you, have, you have to pop the collar. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not entirely sure why I like this, but I do. I think because it, it's a bit unconventional. Um, if you think Atletico Madrid, you're thinking the iconic red and white stripes and the blue shorts, the home shirt. Um, I think typically their away shirts are normally just blue, um, but the fact they mix the kind of navy blue and a white, I kind of like it. It's kind of a bit old school. And then with the, it's, it's very basic as well. There's not too much going on. It's got a nice collar, one of the best badges in football, and the Kia sponsor is just nice and simple. 
Um, and I like how in La Liga they've got the La Liga kind of um, thing on the arm, on the right arm, the La Liga badge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that works well. And it's simplistic. And again, it takes me back to, you know, Atletico Madrid have produced some amazing strikers. Aguero, Falcao, Torres, Forlan, um, probably a few others are missing as well. Diego Costa, etc. It kind of takes me back to that era when they just had that elite team. Yeah, definitely. Um, one player that springs mind definitely Aguero. Um with that sort of key sponsor as well, definitely around that time. I think it was Torres' last season as well, I think. I the think so, got yeah. off Torres. Again, couldn't find one in this kit. <laughs> so Campbell, but he's wearing it. The only one the only <laughs> one I could, the only other one I could find was a picture of him from Pez wearing this kit. Well the quality <laughs> wasn't great, so I wouldn't use that one otherwise. But yeah. Um strange that he's gone it he has gone for red red socks on um on on that one, I think um, that works, no, works better for the Red Sox. I don't know. Looks looks a bit odd, but it's a great it's a great kit. Um, Sean, kick it off for you. What are you thinking? Uh, yeah, it looks um, it looks like they're trying to bring back a seventies kit for the nineties. If you know what I mean, it's like when they try and bring back a retro kit. Yeah, um, and I quite like that. Um, I don't think I've seen that kit to be honest. It's the first time I've seen it. I wasn't a fan of the Liga. Back in the day, no. I I remember it only when Ollie sent it over to me. Like I'd totally gone out of my mind from from obviously when it was first out. But as soon as I saw it, it's like, oh yeah, they had the strange blue, white, and yellow sh- yellow shirt. Uh, Harry, what it, are you thinking? It, it does look a little bit like someone's just stuck a key logo on a polo shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it is quite nice. I just think the sponsor sort of ruins it a little bit for me. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Their third kit was the exact same as this, but with um, uh, red instead of the navy blue, I believe. Mm. Mm. I'm with Harry on this. I like I like the gold on it, but I'm with Harry. I think the Kia logo, it's almost like an afterthought. It does look better with the red sh- short, uh, red socks that, uh, in the pitch with Torres. And perhaps, obviously, the Kia logo looks much better on the home kit. But, yeah, the logo, obviously, we said about the Toyota adding to the Fiorentina um, top, but this one just... Yeah, it looks like a bit of an afterthought for me. Still a nice kit in general, but I think the sponsor just takes away from it. Yeah, yeah I, I couldn't understand that. Do you remember when they were getting sponsored by films as well? Oh, like, yeah. Comedy. The Spider-Man one. Like, Spider-Man, yeah. And like, there's, what, there's some Will Smith film, camera, which film Hitch. it was now. But... Right. Was it Hitch? Hitch? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Oh, it's God. crazy. That. That's, that's mad, isn't it? It's mad. Um, so, yeah, that was your away shirt, Ollie. So, finally... Hit us with your third shirt. Best till last. Um, it's Barcelona 2005 um, third kit. There we go. Look at that. Um, I know I said earlier I, I like a sponsor on, on a on a shirt, um, but obviously with this Barcelona era away home or the third kit, it works well without a sponsor. I think if you took away the badge and the Nike tick it, or, or keep the Nike tick, it maybe looked like a golf shirt. But what I like about it is that it shouldn't it shouldn't work, but it does for me. Um, the pinstripes, kind of uh, rouge and blue, and I don't I don't know what kind of color it is. It's almost like a beigey off gold, isn't it? Um, yeah. But again, it, it takes me back to Ronaldinho, to a young Iniesta, a Xavi, a Puyol. It takes me back to Champions League against Chelsea. There he is, the man himself, Eto. That, was, that was, that the, um, was that when he toe poked it against Chelsea? Yeah, he done, he done like a little shimmy and then just like poked it through a gap past Petr Cech. And um, I think, yeah, I think the whole kit together looks better than just a shirt. But yeah, it's one of those shirts. I've not seen anything like it before or since. And I think that's why I like it. it, it it's one of those shirts that just takes you back in time. Yeah, no, absolutely great kit. One of my, my favourite Barcelona kits, I think, uh, from recent memory. Uh, like I say, just a pit about. Do you just think of that goal straight away in the Champions League against Absolutely. Chelsea? That's all you think of straight away when you see it. And I believe their away shirt next year is going to be gold again. Um, mm. So I don't know if it's a little throwback to this to this kit, but yeah, um, great, great choice, mate. Probably I think probably my favourite of the three. And that, that's hard to say with obviously the Fiorentina shirt, but yeah, this Barcelona kit is uh, it's pretty special. Um, Harriet, we'll start with you on this one. What do you think of Ollie's third kit choice? 
yeah, it's iconic. As soon as I see it, it's just picture on Albinio and like it's not much, you know, uh, any shirt of not, without a sponsor as well just looks 10 times better. Um, it looks a lot better in this photo than with it on. When it's sort of laid out there, I think it looks a little like Newport County's Burberry third kit they're going for. <laughs> but, it's a good kit, though. It's a good kit. <laughs> but on, it, the colour looks a lot nicer, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Sean? It looks like a golf shirt, doesn't it? Like, when it's laid out like that, when you say. Uh, yeah. Obviously, it looks better as a full kit, like Holly said. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not a fan. Oh. Just looks a bit okay. too plain, a bit too, like... Uh, a shirt you sell in a club shop, do you know what I mean? Like branded polos you get. So not a shirt you'd wear on a night out. Like, like um, no, like um, a team would wear in pre-season. Do you only wear the same polo shirt? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, around yeah, the yeah. complex. On the bus. I get yeah, you. One of them. Fair, fair one, fair one. And we'll finish off with you, James. Yeah, for me, um, I prefer the long sleeve. I think with the clip, uh, the picture got there, Ronaldinho. I think I prefer it in the yeah. long sleeve. Um, you set the bar so high with Fiorentina off the, off the bat. It's not it's not going to be my favourite out of the three that you've picked, but um, yeah, it's a very very nice kit. I like the colour on it again. Um, I, I see what you're saying with the sort of it shouldn't work and it does. Um, and again, I think that's just the nostalgia that the kit sort of brings to us in our memory. Absolutely. But yeah, it's a good choice. Yeah, most definitely. And if you had to pick one, Ollie, to to take, which one would it be? <sighs> Ooh, it's got to be the Barcelona shirt. That's all for so. the win. They don't get Absolutely. many wins these days, so it's... Uh, no, exactly. <laughs> it's nice. We're ending the episode with one for Barcelona. I, I would have gone for this one as well, I think. I'm um, definitely a fan of it. Definitely look out for one as well. If I could ever get one from a collection, I'd definitely, definitely go for one. So, yeah, that was... Desert Island Kits. Thanks for the guys for picking their shirts. They've done great. Uh, set the bar again. Uh, on this feature, you talk, you're listening, and watching Talking Kit. Okay, so unfortunately, that is the end of this week's episode. Thanks for joining us, and yeah, what's a big thanks to Ollie and Harry, the guys from Team of Our Lives, for joining us for the episode. It's been it's been brilliant. It's been great talking kit with you. Um, so yeah, guys, where can people find you? Tell them again what you're all about. And uh, yeah, just to spread the word of Team of Our Lives, please. Absolutely. So uh, me and Harry do a podcast called Team of Our Lives. You can find it on Spotify, Apple, Google, wherever you listen to podcasts, really, you can find it. It's all about football in the noughties. Uh, we get guests on to chat about their experiences, their clubs, wherever they may have been, um, play some quizzes, uh, as you may have heard through this episode. We do have a leaderboard for opening a panini <laughs> packet uh, from 15 years ago. Um, uh, yeah, so come check us out wherever you listen to your podcast and follow us on Twitter at Team of Our Lives for any updates. Awesome, Harry. Anything you want to say? Add, uh, you can also get it on YouTube if you just search oh, yeah. Team of Our Lives podcast. <laughs> <That's about laughs> it. Good point, awesome again. Yeah, thanks for joining us, guys. Won't be the last time, I'm absolutely sure of it. Um, but yeah, no, thanks for joining. Um, Sean, yeah, any, glad to have you back. Anything you want to say? great to be back um i'm going to be available for the next um forever hopefully yeah i've given up <laughs> for a little while <laughs> um, <laughs> the evenings, the evenings are going to be free to uh, do this well i'm i'm so happy for that i'm happy. um james anything you want to say mate I mean, Sean's just an absolute natural at this. Um, yeah. Obviously, follow uh, the guys, as they've mentioned. Uh, definitely give them a follow and uh, listen to their podcast. Um, likewise, Talking Kit, you can get us on all the socials. Follow me as well, at Counterfeit Crookie on Instagram. Uh, I do, a, well, I have recently posted my upcoming gigs. It'd be great to see people there. But yeah, just get following Talking Kit for more content like this. Definitely. Uh, yeah, just reiterate. Get liking and subscribing to the channel. We are trying to get our subs up. Um, on YouTube, so yeah, just give us a smash a like on the videos and also subscribe. Like I say, we have the Friday night shows for Premier League games, uh, the strip down where we talk to the other fans of other teams other than United and we just run through the games for that weekend. So yeah, check us all out at Talking Kit on everything and we will see you again for another episode. Just make sure that you are always Talking Kit. Mm-hmm.